Hey guys, I am coming to you from my tree swing right now. This is one of my all-time favorite places to get inspiration. So much so that my husband actually snow blows paths for me so I can come out here like a crazy person in sub-zero temperatures and swing. Yeah, not a good idea. Anyway, if you are somebody who has been struggling with artist block and needs some ideas on how to get out of it or to stay inspired, please stay tuned and I will tell you some of my ways of getting out of artist block. Hi, Shanna Rowe Jackson here from Caution Artists at Play, and today I am going to tell you some of my favorite ways to get out of artist block. But before I do that, I just want to tell you a little bit about the project that I'm working on in the video. So I am actually taking a painting course right now, and I have a project that I have to do where I have to create my own environment, either real or imaginary. So I decided that I wanted to create a fairy, like a fairy house in a garden. And that's what I'm working on in this project. You will see me struggling with multiple kinds of glue and just kind of like going through the process of making my own little world. It was a lot of fun and down the line I'm actually going to be painting the scene. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Anyway, so let's talk about inspiration. Sometimes it can be hard to find inspiration and it's I think something that all creative types go through, but I have a few ways that I like to get myself inspired. And so here are 10 of the ways that I like to stay inspired. The first one would be to step away from art for a little bit. Not for very long, like you want to keep the thing, you know, keep the ball rolling and everything. But I find one of the best ways that I have inspiration come to me is when I'm doing like really mundane tasks that have nothing to do with art. Things that don't really require a lot of thinking like dishes or laundry or chores, just in general, things that allow you to not have to use too much of your brain power to do the activity itself. And it will let your mind wander. At least that's what it does for me. There are times when I am doing dishes that, you know, my mind just wanders and some of my best inspiration comes to me. Not that I'm a fan of dishes, but that's at least an upside of having to do chores. So step away for a minute and just let your mind wander. Number two is to take a walk in nature. It's kind of hard, at least for me, not to be inspired when I'm walking around amongst the trees and just being part of nature. Nature is just one of my favorite things. And of course, I like to do a lot of landscape elements, so that helps. But I think just being out in, you know, out in the world and breathing in the fresh air, or even if you live in the city, you can still go out for a walk and just breathe in, you know, take in the sights, just get outside of your house and do something different. And that can help new ideas come to you as well. Number three would be to doodle or sketch without a plan. Just see where it goes. Open up your sketchbook or even doodle on the back side of an envelope. It really doesn't matter. Just take a pen or a pencil, any writing utensil you have, and start scribbling and doodling. Just, just see where it goes. Don't worry if it looks good, and eventually you may actually come up with an idea. Draw a few lines and then connect them in a way that you didn't think of. Or draw a blob and put a face on it. Just anything. Just start drawing and doing, you know, something. And then probably inspiration will strike. At least that tends to work for me. Number four is to listen to music. So you saw me in the intro on my tree swing. So what I normally am doing when I'm on my tree swing is I put on my iPod and I just listen to it and I let it go. And it's it goes the same thing, kind of just letting your mind water or wander. Um, so I do the same thing when I'm exercising. If I'm on my elliptical, I put on my earphones and I just let the music take me and I let all the feelings come through that each song, you know, brings to me. Music, I think, is just a great way to get inspired. Um, you can even do artwork that is inspired by your favorite song. So definitely listening to music is probably one of my favorite ways to get inspired. Number five, look at other artists' work that you admire or, you know, read about the masters. Go to a museum. Just take in some art. Go onto YouTube or Facebook or there's artists all around and 
sometimes they, even if it's somebody that is doing a different style than yours, just look at art and that can help get you inspired. Even if you just Google art and just look at art on the Google images, I wouldn't recommend necessarily to just like copying art, but at least just take in art and, you know, to me that always brings me some sort of inspiration or I may see something new that I hadn't thought of and it might bring me out of my funk. Number six is to study styles that you don't know much about. So look up new techniques on YouTube or try out a new book, you know, like a how-to book or just, you know, if you are normally into realism, try out impressionism or if you're having a hard time, I don't know, if you're getting bored with doing animation Try something realistic or, you know, just try something new that takes you out of your comfort zone and you never know what you learn with that new technique can transfer to the technique that you already do. To, I, I do that quite often, actually. I'll even, like, draw with my wrong hand or something, you know, just to loosen myself up and it ends up helping me, like, find inspiration. Number seven is to keep a file of reference photos as like a rainy day file. Um, I tend to take more reference photos than I'll probably ever, ever use. So I always have a rainy day file technically, but sometimes just looking through old reference photos that I may not have been inspired by before will inspire me now. Or if I'm really desperate, I'll play eeny, meeny, miny, mo, and then just draw whatever, <laughs> whatever I choose. Anything to get me out of the, you know, artist block or creative funk. Um, number eight is to not be afraid to draw mundane things. Um, I use my logo as an example, the painting that actually inspired me to call myself Caution Artist at Play. One day I was literally inspired by, I think it was a yield sign. And I decided I thought it would look really cool to have an artist at her easel painting. And that's where I came up with Caution Artist at Play. So you can find inspiration anywhere. It could be a street sign. It could be a slug on the ground. Just don't be afraid to look at things in a new way, at new angles. Don't be afraid to draw or paint something ugly that other people might find mundane. I think one of the best things that about artists is that we can take things that are mundane or drab or even ugly and make them beautiful. So don't be afraid to find inspiration in the simplest things. Number nine is to do an artist challenge. And I actually haven't done this yet, but I've seen a lot of fun artist challenges on YouTube. And you don't have to be a YouTube artist to do the fun challenges. So something like the Crayola marker challenge or the three marker challenge or the one dollar art supply challenge, just something like that. You know, just look up art challenge on YouTube and see what appeals to you and try something like that and it might get you out of your comfort zone and it might get you out of a funk. I definitely plan on doing a couple challenges down the line because I just think they look so much fun. Um, number 10 would be to try a new medium or play with art supplies or even shop for art supplies. And this is something that gets me inspired no matter what. I I don't know. I, I think I like shopping for art supplies and finding out about new art supplies almost as much as I like using them. So if you are having a day where you're just feeling a little bit low and you are in that artist block and you don't know what to do and nothing appeals to you, go to jerryzartorama.com or dickblick.com or even Amazon and just look through art supplies or look through an art supply catalog because you never know what you'll find. There's probably mediums there that you've never thought to try. And then if you see a medium you haven't heard about, Look it up and see what other artists are doing with it. I mean, that's the advice that I have when it comes to that. And that usually gets me really inspired. So those are my top 10 tips for getting inspired. And my main message that I really want to get across is if you are in a slump, do not feel bad about it. Do not beat yourself up over it because every artist has been there. It doesn't make you less of an artist. It doesn't mean that you're not creative. We all have our ups and downs and you will get through it and you'll be creating again. So try some of these tips, tips if they help or just let, like, let it ride out. But please do not feel bad if you're going through it because like I said, we all do. 
So that's it for today. Here is my little fairy house. It's in a garden. I had a lot of fun with this. I will be, like I said, I'll be painting this for a, an art class um, that I'm taking right now at a university. So you can probably look forward to seeing the paintings. Hopefully they'll come out as fun as the actual scenery itself. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please stay inspired. If you like what you see, hit subscribe. Thanks.